Step 3. Attenuation. In this step, we will consider the rest of the sources of losses that we mentioned in step 1. So, let's look at absorption. Absorption happens due to interaction of light with the material of the fiber. And there are two types of absorption. There is the intrinsic absorption, where even if we have a perfect fiber, it, the intrinsic absorption is responsible for attenuating the uh, signal. So this is something that we cannot get rid of. It's just present uh, in there, and it's due to the interaction between the photons of the signal and the electrons in the material. The electrons absorb the photons from the signal, and they become uh, excited. Therefore, the overall signal, the power of the signal, um, decreases. And uh, this is just an intrinsic property of the fiber, and we cannot really affect it. It's something that we just have to live with and accept. But luckily, it's not a very significant uh, source of error, especially when we compare it to the other type of absorption, which is extrinsic, extrinsic absorption. And this is due to some impurities that are present in the fiber. And these impurities are introduced during the manufacturing uh, process. So, this on one hand is a much more significant source of absorption and therefore attenuation of the signal, but we can control it by perfecting our manufacturing process. And generally, uh, during the, the manufacturers are trying to keep the, the amount of impurities that are present in the fiber below 1%. The other source of attenuation is due to scattering. This is similar to uh, absorption, but the light is not only absorbed, it is also re-radiated and re-emitted back into the fiber at random directions. Now this is uh, done again due to the impurities in the fiber and can be controlled by the manufacturing process and limiting the amount of impurities that are present in the fiber. And there are many different types of scattering. There's a linear scattering, there is non-linear scattering, but the details will not be uh, uh, discussed in, at the current, uh, in the current lesson. And uh, the final two sources of uh, attenuation are bending and coupling. Bending is when we actually physically bend the fiber. Remember, we said that uh, the angle of incidence is crucial uh, for total internal reflection to take place and therefore for the signal to propagate down the fiber. And then if we bend it, we can have a situation where at first uh, the, uh, the light ray is traveling down the fiber, it's becoming totally uh, uh, internally reflected, but then it hits the angle at the bend and suddenly it, it gets reflected in such a way that it cannot satisfy the condition for total internal reflection anymore, and it just gets absorbed or uh, it leaves the fiber. And generally, the manufacturers specify some minimum bending radius. And typically, it's around uh, 10 to 20 times the diameter of the fiber. And the other source of coupling, uh, other source of error, is the coupling error. This is inevitably, we will have to join two fibers together. And if there is a cap, gap between the fibers, then what can happen is the light can, of course, uh, escape through the gap. Or another source of a coupling error is when the fibers are not aligned together. So even if there is no gap, but they're slightly misaligned, like here in this bottom example, then light is allowed to escape and leave the fiber. Therefore, the overall signal will become attenuated. So those were the main sources of uh, losses. Now we're going to discuss how to quantify the attenuation in a fiber. So as the signal propagates through the fiber, it loses power. So we need to quantify how much power it lost. And this is done via a unit called the decibel. The decibel designates the ratio of the two power levels, the power in and the power out. So the number of decibels is defined as the following expression. It's minus 10 times logarithm base 10 of the ratio of uh, power out and power in. Now, this minus is here because this ratio is less than 1. Remember, the power out has to be less than power in because the signal is getting um, attenuated. And these 10s are here because we are talking about decibels. 
deci means 10, so therefore we are multiplying by 10 over here, and it sets the overall, the overall scale. Now, why, are, why do we have uh, this logarithm here? And that's because we will be considering a large span of orders of magnitude between the power in and the power out. And therefore, if we take the logarithm, uh, then it will produce a sort of generally nice, uh, nice scale for the number of decibels. So, for example, if we have the ratio of power out to power in as 1 to 10, meaning that 90% of the power becomes attenuated, then this corresponds to 10 decibels, as you can convince yourself by substituting for P0 over PI into this formula. If the ratio is 1 to 100, then this corresponds to 20 decibels. If it's 1 to 1000, this corresponds to 30 decibels. So you can see that this ratio on the, of the power out over power in is uh, getting smaller by an order of magnitude, whereas here the increase in terms of the decibel is just linear. And this is due to the definition in terms of the logarithm for the decibels. We can also define the attenuation parameter alpha. And this is the number of decibels per kilometer. So alpha is just our previous expression divided by the length of the fiber, L. And we can now rearrange it, bring uh, L to the other side, bring the minus to the other side, and divide by 10 to obtain this expression. And we can also get uh, an expression for the fraction of the power out over power in being equal to 10 raised to the power of negative alpha times L over 10. So we said in the previous lessons that in 1970 the optical fiber managed to transmit 1% of the power that was put in over a distance of 1 kilometer. We can now just plug it into this formula, well this formula over here, and we will obtain that alpha, the attenuation parameter, is 20 decibels per kilometer. And then we said that two decades later, the transmission rose to around 96% over kilometer, which corresponds to attenuation level of 0.18 decibels per kilometer. So let's plot these two values to see what they look like. Here on the horizontal axis, we are plotting the length of the fiber through which our signal is uh, traveling. And on the vertical axis, we've got the ratio of the power out over power in. So, if the length of the fiber is zero, then of course the ratio is one. Our signal hasn't traveled anything, so it didn't have chance to be attenuated. But as it travels uh, through, this blue line corresponds to the attenuation levels that were achieved in the 1970. So the alpha is set to be 20 decibels per kilometer, and this orange line is the uh, attenuation parameter in the 1990. So we can see that how quickly, how quickly the ratio approaches zero for the very, very large attenuation parameter, alpha equals to 20, whereas for the very low attenuation parameter, it decreases much more slowly. Now the question is, knowing what the main sources of loss are, and knowing how to quantify them, how can we protect against these losses? How can we counteract these losses in our fiber? 